This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and we have an interesting case today. She's a 73-year-old lady who presented with symptoms of uh, acute angle closure glaucoma and uh, she was treated medically and also she underwent laser iridotomy in both the eyes. And these are her uh, biometry readings. We can see that the antechamber is uh, pretty shallow and when we did the antisegment OCT, we can clearly see that the lens is really thick and could be a contributing factor for the angle closure in this patient. The patient also had significant nuclear sclerosis and that's the reason we thought we are going to do the lens extraction of this patient and let's see how things turn out. The pressures were very much under control on the day of surgery but still I insisted on having IV mannitol before the surgery and uh, the patient is draped and I'm giving 1 ml of uh, posterior subtenance xylocaine uh, just to ensure more comfort to the patient. As the preliminary steps are being done for the surgery, a few concerns as far as this case we need to list out. Number one, as we all know, the there is lack of space inside the eye for all our maneuvers, so I need to be mindful of that. Number two, I would expect some amount of zonular weakness in this patient, so I should be ready. And regarding the emulsification of the nucleus, I don't think there's going to be much difficulty, unless and until, of course, we have a very uh, weak zonules. So these are the things which are going in my head and let's see how things turn out. The antechamber is filled with OVD. Now is the time to perform the praxis. And as I keep telling, the health of the zonules we come to know only when we touch the anticapsule. The moment I touch the capsule, you can see momentarily there, is, there are these uh, radial stri appearing, suggesting that the zonules are weak. But I could puncture the capsule quite easily. The flap is raised and now I want to make a rexus which is larger slightly, maybe 5 mm or 5.5 mm. Even though I aiming to make a larger rexus, the rexus is slightly smaller than actually what I would have liked. It is about say 5 mm. And whenever you have an undersized rexus, in spite of aiming for a bigger rexus, it gives an indirect hint that the zonules are not great because whenever there is lax zonules we don't have the counter traction for us to tear the capsule and make a bigger rexus so invariably in eyes with weak zonules our rexus tends to be much more smaller than actually what we intended to do on the contrast if you look at a younger patient who have very healthy zonules and the capsule is held very elastic in these patients we invariably tend to make bigger rexus than what we intended to make. So moving on to this case, hydrodissection is the most important step now because I know that the zonules are weak. I will not proceed with the case unless until I am certain that the corticocapsular adhesions are truly freed up. So this is my first attempt of hydrodissection. The fluid has gone behind. I go ahead and try to tap the nucleus on the other side just to let out the fluid. And also try to nudge the nucleus around just to see whether it is free. And as I'm trying to nudge, I can note that the capsule bag is also moving. So this is a clear evidence that the hydrodissection is not still good enough. So I go back and redo the hydrodissection. And again, the decompression maneuver is done. I would always try to do the decompression maneuver in the diagonally opposite to the quadrant where the fluid has been injected. So I try to do this. It looks to be a little bit better now. When I'm trying to nudge the nucleus, the bag doesn't seem to be moving around a lot. But I would like to still confirm this. The eye is pressurized with OVD and I'm using a very sharp chopper to rotate the nucleus very gently. So when you're trying to attempt a nucleus rotation in eyes with weak zonules, the one tip I would like to share here. When you're trying to rotate, press the nucleus down just a bit and then rotate. So the movement is first down and then rotation movement rather than rotating in the same plane. The advantage is when you try to go down and then rotate, you're pushing the nucleus slightly away from the equator and the anticapsule and that prevents some resistance and you, we can rotate the nucleus much more easily and also by causing lesser stress on the bag and the zonules. So that is one principle which I follow in such situations. So getting the rexus right and the hydrodissection were probably the more important steps in this uh, surgery. I don't expect much difficulty in the nucleus management. The phaco probe and the chopper are introduced into the eye. The superficial epinucleus is being removed now. 
Once we have a mobile nucleus, it's much more safer for emulsification of the nucleus. So I'm creating a small central pit here. The settings are now changed to the chop mode where I'm going to use just the longitudinal energy. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The chopper goes down vertically first and then laterally. So all the movements have to be very gentle in these eyes. When I'm doing nucleus rotation, please note that I'm using both the instruments, the left hand chopper as well as the phaco tip to rotate. This technique ensures that the we don't use more force for nucleus rotation because it is the nucleus is being supported by two instruments. It requires lesser physical force rotate. So that is the advantage of using this bimanual technique. The heminucleus is then being divided into multiple smaller fragments. The movements are going to be the same. You're going to hold the nucleus with the phaco tip. The chopper goes down vertically and then lateral separation. So we have around six smaller fragments now and now is the time to emulsify each of them. The fragments are held by the phaco tip and brought into the central safe zone near the excess margin and then emulsified. So this is the last piece which is being emulsified now and uh, before that, I just like to go back and inject a little bit more OVD, maneuver the nucleus out into a central safer zone so that I have better access to it and then it's emulsified. So far so good. Now is the time to remove the cortex. The chamber is refilled with OVD just to deepen it a little bit. And then um, with the bimanual I and A, uh, the cortex is being aspirated. When I'm trying to aspirate the last bit of fiber, I can see that uh, my tip has caught hold of the bag. Uh, but I realize it quickly enough and just let it go. The hands are switched. The last bit of fiber, I'm just trying to struggle to remove it. But at this stage, it's very clearly evident that the this bag deserves a CTR. So I need to go ahead and plan to inject a CTR inside the bag. So here I'm using cohesive OVD, that is sodium hyaluronate, to form the bag. The bag is very nicely formed and the CTR is being threaded. Uh, and I always prefer to thread it through the side port. The second instrument, which is uh, the along Sinsky, is supporting or anchoring the CTR as it is being threaded into the bag. The planned multipiece lens is placed into the bag. In this case, I'm not using the IOL trap technique as the generalized zonular weakness is not very significant. So I thought uh, the lens is going to be well centered even uh, by placing it into the bag and hopefully it should serve well for the coming years. Already both in front and behind the lens is irrigated out. The side ports are hydrated, the main scene is hydrated, that's it, the case is done. And these are the first day post-op pictures and it would be very interesting to see the OCT images pre and post-op. And these are the post-op OCT images and you can see the dramatic deepening of the antechamber and the opening of the angle. And just a side-by-side -side comparison of the pre-op and the post-op OCT, the patient's pressures are fine and uh, she is doing well. So this is one case where we had a bulky lens in a very small eye and the lens itself uh, was contributing for the, the angle closure in this particular scenario and uh, timely lens extraction would definitely be helpful in such situations in preventing further progression of the disease. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.